when it comes to putting the signatures together for your junk journal and putting all of those papers that you have collected into the signatures, then you might have the following problem. You have printed out a printable that you want to use for your junk journal or you have any other reference page. In my case, it's a DNA4 page that I have folded in half so that I have DNA5 and this is also the size for my journal. So you have found the size for your journal as well and then you perhaps have pages like this one here that are obviously way too big to put them into the signature. And if you fold them like this, you have the additional problem that the image that you want to have in your journal is the wrong direction. Of course, we want to have this page like this, but how to manage that? How to manage to put such big pages into a junk journal signature? In this video, I would like to show you some ideas, some different variations of how that is possible. Um, the video is like throwing some ideas into the world. <laughs> Hopefully some of them are landing on your desk so that you can try that out with the pages and the papers that you have collected because of course I know you don't have the same pages like I have but the things and the ideas that I want to share in this video can be yeah translated to nearly any kind of page that you have collected. So the first thing that I like to do is I like to take my reference page. That's in this case, as I said, this DNA5 page. Originally that was DNA4. I have printed my printables to those pages, folded them in half, and then I have this DNA5 page here. By the way, the Grungy Fairies printable that you can see here is listed down below this video in the description box for you and the Grungy backgrounds that I have used to print to the back side of my papers um, is listed down below as well so that you can check that out if you want to make exactly the same kind of thing like I'm doing here and if you want to follow this tutorials here uh, with exactly the same papers like I have here then you can find them in the description box. So the first thing that I have here is my DNA5 page. The rest of my printable pages, of course, are DNA5 as well. So I can put them away because I know that they have the same size. And then I like to go through my papers that I have collected for this journal. And then I take uh, one, one page after each other and I place them here on top of my reference page. As you can see, this page from the children's book I have already folded it in half and when I lay it down here I can see it is smaller than DNA5 so it will fit into my journal without any problems. And so I'm going through my pages and I look if I have any page that is too big. Um, the pages that are matching you can also take several uh, at the same time when you can see that it will go here and you want to check it twice then you can see here's a little thing that will peek out but that's okay we are making a junk journal it's okay when something is peeking out the rest will fit so take this whole thing and place it to uh to the side because we only need the pages that are too big for today so for example this page here is way too big as you can see so it's higher the uh, image here that we want to use has these little women here and this music uh, sheet thingies, these little scraps from the music sheet. And if I want to put it like this and I want to fold it like this, then it would be okay because it would be the same height as DNA5, the same width, but even if this fits now, my images are in the wrong direction because I want to see those uh, women here like this. But uh, now when I put it like this, it's too wide. So um, let's place the page here. <clears throat> we have the same problem with this page here. I want to use this image of this dancing woman here. Um, and I don't know what will happen with this image, but the page is too big. I also have the pages from the children's books and that is, I think, uh, the biggest problem, I would say. But um, I want to start with something something really easy and really grungy today. So 
<laughs> let's take this page because that is also way too big um i have the feeling that i have to start with the grunge today <laughs> so let's take that first so this page as you can see has a really strange format if i take my uh dna4 page you can see it's only a little bit too wide and a little bit too high but in total that's way too much so if i want to fold this in half and then place this here for the signature as you can see this would be the amount of paper that would peek out from my journal and that's not what i want to have of course the most easiest and most obvious way would be to take a paper trimmer and just cut here here and here so that you have exactly DNA 5 and you would lose this brown paper here. You would lose no image or something like that or no pattern. I mean, here's not really a pattern. You would lose this tiny thing of wood pattern, but that would be not the problem. But that's a really boring way to make this page smaller. I mean, if you want to have a really clean and... Yeah, a clean journal that has really crisp edges and every page is the same, then of course, please trim just this uh, overlapping things here and you would have the perfect page for your journal. But we want to make some grunge. We want to have the pages a little bit, you know, this special feeling and not all the same look. So um, we want to try something different. So the first thing that I that I'm doing is the following. You can see this fold here in the paper and the first thing that I'm doing is I'm tearing this a little bit like this and the same thing on the bottom like this. Ooh. If something like this happens it's not the problem please just ignore that it's a crunchy journal it's no problem and then I take my DNA 5 page and put that back here to this other page just to check if the fold, uh, sorry, if this uh, opening here where I have teared it is exactly um, here where the DNA 5 page is. Can you see that? So it's also um, even a little bit uh, more to the inside than the DNA 5 page is, but that doesn't matter. If you have teared it like this and then put it like this and you put this over here, and open it, it like this this would be totally fine but what would be not so good is if you have it like this and this opening only goes like this so that you have this little uh, thing here that would be not so good so make sure that these both openings here and on the bottom are like this do you know what i mean so that we have uh, that exactly or nearly exactly like DNA 5 is high and then we can just place it like this approximately to the middle here but that doesn't matter if it's a little bit you know you can eyeball that and then you just take this little thing here so the the top layer of this paper here and then you make a little fold so that you know where DNA 5 is so just to make sure that you have this here and this here so that you later on can take off the page and then you can still see where DNA 5 is. So that means DNA 5 is going from here to here and you have these both little things as some kind of a guideline. And now you take the page and let's start here on the top. And now we are folding this little thing here just like this. Please make sure that you have this little angle here when you fold this because if you would fold it like this, that would also be, of course, a possibility just to fold it like this, then it would be shorter as well. But when you then later on put this page into the signature and you uh, have bound the journal together, then this thing would be here like this. And when you then flip the page, it could happen that this little thing is in the way and you can't flip the page without any noises, without any problems and without any bulk here in the middle. So we want to avoid bulk. <laughs> so that's the reason why I'm always folding this like this. So that we have this little space here and when the next page comes over this one, this is not in the way and we would have uh, less bulk here in this area. So the, the next thing that I'm doing is I am tearing a little bit here into my page. 
just like this. You can do that as randomly as you want. And then from here, where my original fold was, I'm just putting, uh, not putting, I'm just uh, folding the paper like this because of those little uh, damages here. It's way easier than anything else and it looks a little bit more interesting so that we now have approximately a straight line here and we have this like this. On the other side we can do the same thing so this is th just the other short side we are just folding this with this little angle like so and then just tear it here. You can also do that really extremely and tear it way more into the page that's totally your personal uh, preference how you want to do that then we go from here in a straight line <laughs> to the other direct uh, to the other end of the um, page and of course you can go really crazy here with your folds like you want that just do it like this and now when we have that we can of course um, just flip this around and now we have the guideline here on the first layer of the paper so we can just tear this here like this make sure that you have the little angle here and then you can just go crazy and fold this like you want it a little bit crazy this paper so let's do this here as well just trying to make it a little bit more extreme so that you can see how many possibilities you, ha you will have with this technique and now we can just take the DNA 5 page back and we can check um, if we have made everything right so as you can see now it's uh, not so high than DNA 5 so we can even see a little bit here I think I have folded it a little bit too far but that's totally fine it's totally fine to have these little things here that are picking out from the next page I really love that but now we have the problem that we have to do this on this side of the page as well of course because here we have DNA5 that's, um, so this is too wide. So let's uh, just perhaps, hmm, let's tear this piece here Ooh. so that the corner gets not too bulky. And that's of course also a thing that you can do. You can just tear, for example, a whole piece here like this and then go to the inside, for example, and then just place it for example like this and here you could even make a little ruffle or something like that so let me just try that so that it gets a really cool effect here i will show you this in detail later and then here it gets relatively bulky as you can see this area here there's much layers of paper on top of each other so we can just oh this paper is really strong <laughs> tear that off carefully okay so then we have that. Let's turn that around and do this here as well. Shall we perhaps uh, make something really strange here? We could also just, what about something like this? Just fold it over like this and tear here. Like so, perhaps. Ready to go. <laughs> okay, so if you have... Um, uh, torn some of these scraps here don't throw these away I like to have a little container where I put all of these little scraps in because this of course is exactly the same paper like this and when you later on perhaps have um, the next page that you want to put to the signature so let me just grab a page uh, for example let's say we want to take the braille paper next then you would uh, take this and add that to the signature. Of course, this is still too long, yeah. but you can imagine what I want to say, even if it's too long. Take this, place it here, for example, make a little collage, put a button on top, 
or smear a little bit of gesso and you would have a really cool color bridge between these both pages. This color is really extreme compared to this brown paper here. And if you want to have a connection between these both pages, then you can just take the scraps that you've torn here, put them here, and the problem is solved. So I like to save these for later. And now we have this little uh, disaster here. <laughs> so this is, of course, not finished. It looks a little bit strange, doesn't it? <laughs> so I will go uh, around this page with my sewing machine now. So I will sew over these little areas um, with a zigzag stitch, uh, perhaps, I, I guess. Um, and after that, perhaps with a straight stitch, uh, stitch as well. Um, and... If you have no sewing machine, of course, you could also glue that and just press it down. Take a black pen or something like that and just imitate um, the stitching from the sewing machine. Or you could also take a stapler and just staple this. I think that looks really interesting as well. Uh, you could even leave it like it is. But in this areas here, I would say that's not so durable so it's a little bit strange here of course and um for that i would suggest to sew to glue or to staple this whole thing um and when we go to the sewing machine i think we can also take some pieces of fabric and just sew them here and there <laughs> to this little thing here so i will just um take some pieces from this a box of random fabric scraps. I will take them to my sewing machine and while I'm sewing around uh, I will place those here and then I will just sew them on top of the page in one step. I will show you in a second how that looks. So here we go. <laughs> this is my result and I think this looks really really interesting. So when we this, I take this now and put this here so that you can imagine how it would look if a second page would be inside or several pages. Looks like this. And I think this is a really, really cool page. So as you can see, I have taken different um, possibilities to sew over this. I have the zigzag stitching and the straight stitching. I went around this whole thing with the zigzag stitch first because it's easier to sew pieces of lace or fabric when you have the zigzag because it is wider and it has more uh, place where it can grab the fabric or the lace and here this little cross came because I have uh, when I went the second round around this uh, page I have um, sewn forwards backwards forwards backwards and moved the paper a little bit around while I have done that and here you can see now this little ruffle thingy. I have just sewn that. As you can see here, it's a ruffle now. You could also, of course, place um, some more papers here um, or make some more layers just within the ruffle. That would look uh, nice as well. But I haven't done that because I have this relatively strong, uh, I mean, strong look. Uh, of this fabric here so I've decided that I want to leave this here now we can put a button here for example or something else on the back it looks like this uh, here I have also included this fabric that I have sewn on this side and on the inside as well so of course you can also make some page tabs with this method and yeah here some more fabric and this little piece of don't know what this is and now perhaps you think oh this I mean when you have this flow on your sewing machine <laughs> perhaps you know that feeling then sometimes you have such strange things like this if you don't like that that it is hanging here or if you are afraid that this goes into um, the sewing or the, the binding of your journal um, if you don't want that then just place it somewhere here for example where you like it and oh, we could also make a little loop like this and just take a stapler and staple that. But shall we put another piece of something there as well so that it looks way more interesting? Oh, what about this? 
This is also a great way to use up your fabric and lace scraps. If you have those tiny things, of course, you can just take this. Oh, that's very uh, strange to handle. Sorry, <laughs> you can't see anything. Okay, how can I manage that? Just bring this. I, I have to bring the stapler in first and then. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sometimes I have problems that I haven't thought about before starting filming. So just place this underneath of the stapler thing and then just staple it. Good job, Louise. So then you, then we have this. And I think this is a really cool collage or a little, some kind of a cluster for it, for itself. And this took me only seconds. I mean, that was really easy. So, uh, yeah, now we have that and we can put that here and we would have a really interesting page. And of course, the order of the pages, you can always change later. I'm just um, putting this page in here now and it's upside down, sorry. I'm just placing that, that in here so that you can imagine how it will look when a page is here. Of course, you can say, I don't like this page. I want another page or I want um, a book page or something like that. Then just please place a book page here, bring it to the right size and um, you have the order that you want for your pages. I'm just doing that for a demonstration. So let's put that back in here. And uh, I'm, I have to correct myself. I'm not doing that only for demonstration for this video. I'm also doing that, of course, when I do that without the camera. When I make a junk journal, I'm doing it exactly like this because I think when you put the pages together, you get a way more... Um, clear feeling for what you want to do and which papers you want to put uh, next to each other. If I have this only here on my table and I think, okay, I have some pages here that I have, want to use. I have the other pages here that I want to use, but what shall I do next? I think this decision, <coughs> excuse me, please. Oh, this decision uh, is way more difficult when you have only this one page here than when you have two pages or even more pages that are already together like this, you get a feeling for the character of your journal this way. I think that's only my opinion, of course, but please try that out. Perhaps you feel the same when you do that. And of course, that would make me very happy if it's the fact that you feel the same. Um, and I also like to put other pages around here. So, for example, this one. Ooh, this would also and that's what I mean. Uh, I mean, I haven't planned that. Yeah, what I'm saying exactly right now, I haven't planned that. But look at this. I put the page here and I can see that this diagonal or nearly diagonal line of the sewing machine goes really well with this here. Look at this, like we have torn it exactly here to make this visible. And again, if I don't have this in my hand layered like this, then I can't see such things. So this could bring me to the decision that I want to have this page later on in my journal exactly like this because of this cool effect here. And that are things that you only can see if you play around with the papers and try out different things. You can take that off and think, oh, is there perhaps a better solution for the next page? Place this here. And it would be way more boring than it was before. But you can't see that when you are not doing it. Okay, so let's go to the next page. I think I want to have this exactly like it is here now because this gives me much inspiration for the next things. And the next thing that I want to take is this page here, this braille paper. I've already folded this in half um, because I want, it, uh, I want to have it like this. But it's a little bit too long, as you can see. So um, if I have it like this, it looks really, really strange. And if I want to, uh, if I would put it to the very bottom of my DNA 5 page here, then we would have this amount of paper that would peek out from the journal. And this is approximately two centimeters. That is way too much for me. Um, since we have this torn edges here, it would be, I think, a great idea to tear this page as well. But for me, it's way too boring to just tear it here 
or here and on the bottom. That's for me, it's too boring. So let's try something different. One possibility would be to decide now that these are the three pages that you want to have in the signature exactly in this order. You could say, okay, this looks fantastic. I will leave it exactly like it is. And I want to have this here as a fourth layer. So my printable is the first layer, this one here. This uh, tomato paper is the second layer. And this is the third layer. And now you could think, okay, something tiny here would be perhaps good. Then you take the page and you can lay it now here uh, to do the other layers and see how high you want to have that. And then you could just measure this here with your eyes like this and just tear it like this. Take it, put it here and you would be done. I think this looks really interesting. This uh, torn edge goes like this this goes in another direction I really really like that but there's a way cooler solution because now we have this left over I mean this is not good we have this in our stash or on the table and later after we have finished the junk title we have this and we don't know what to do with it why not using it now <laughs> So there's a really, really easy solution how you can use both of these papers here and have a page that is fitting into your journal later. So let's just reconstruct how we did this because that is important. I've just uh, destroyed my own video effect. <laughs> Congratulations, Louisa. How was this? Was it like this? Yes. Okay, so we had the braille paper like this then we have torn it so now when we want to use both pieces of this we do the following thing we we remember how this was uh when it was complete and this we take and put it away for a second then we take the bottom piece we will put this here just like this so that it lines up with the bottom of the signature. Then we take the second piece exactly in the right direction like it was when it was complete and we take this, let this overlap here a little bit and line this up with the uh, top of the signature. So now we have it like this and as you can see now it looks <clears throat> like it has the right height for the signature. Here it's one line and here it's one line and here now it's overlapping a little bit as you can see. Now you could um, leave that as it is and you could sew the signature into the journal. Then you would have two pages, one like this that would open like this and the other one that would open like this. So that would be two pages and on the other side here, of course, as well. But you could also bring these together in a really, I think, really, really cool way. So let's take this. We carefully take out these things here. You could also uh, clamp that together with some paper clips so that it can't move. That would be probably a good idea. But you could also check if it's still the same height by just placing the signature next to it and checking that. And then you hold that with your fingers like this. Then we take out some stuff that we can use for distressing. So in our um, color palette that we have chosen in the very beginning when we started this journal, there was Freight Burlap Distress Oxide Ink. So we are going to use that for distressing this whole thing and now I'm doing the following I'm I have to turn that around carefully turn that around so that I can move my brush more easily I press this down take some ink and just go over this edge here this looks really uh, strong now but uh, that will change in a second like this And just do that as you want it, please. But if you want to have this effect that I want to show you, go over this torn edge here really uh, 
with really much ink, I would say, like this. Then we are carefully turning this around. Do the same thing on the back side so that you don't be angry with yourself in the end <laughs> because you have forgotten that. <laughs> in the German video that happened to me, I have forgotten to <laughs> distress the rest, <laughs> the back side. Now, when you take this apart, look at this cool edge. I mean, ah! <laughs> This isn't, isn't this cool? I mean, this is so cool. And now you can just put it to get back together like this and just leave a millimeter space in between. I mean, to be correct, the page is now one millimeter higher than DNA 5. But yeah, we don't care about that. I want to see this little slot there when I glue that or sew that together now. But before I do that, I will do something else. I found out something, so uh, I want to show that to you, of course. So I will just open this so that I have the whole surface here. Then I will place that here really, really exactly. Shall we take some paper clips, Louisa, and just clip that together to make no mess on the table and mess on the paper? That would be probably not such a bad idea. So <laughs> I will just clamp that together. <laughs> Sorry, I had a clown for my breakfast today. <sighs> so do it like this. I'm always so excited when I found out new things and I want to show them to you so that I'm sometimes a little bit, you know, strange. Okay, so we have this. Now we can make sure that nothing can go into this little slot there so that we don't lose this cool edge that we've just made there. And uh, I found out a really cool combination of mediums. So this was, as I said, Distress Oxide Ink Freight Burlap that we have put to the page just a second ago. And then I have this cool spray here, this dye spray. This is the color Honey. And that's very funny because my friend Honey <laughs> gifted this to me. Isn't this just a cool thing? So I found out that this dye spray in the color honey and freight burlap distress oxide ink gives not only a really really cool effect but and especially on braille paper by the way but it also matches my grungy fairies junk journal kit really really well so if you have these pages and the ephemera pack um, and you have the spray or something similar, then of course you could imitate that uh, exactly like I'm doing it here. Of course, you could also take frayed burlap and something else that looks like this spray. So this is a really intensive orange, I would say. So you will see that in a second. Let me just bring out, bring the other papers out of the way because this is spritzing really, really, you know, far. Now I'm trying to get some of this spray here to my uh, paper and look at this. Isn't this just cool? And I'm trying to get only a little bit here and there so that it is overlapping the frayed burlap because that makes this interesting mixture later. But I also want to have some of this pure braille paper left over because uh, later on I will spritz some water and then the whole thing will spread a little bit. And of course, that then looks way more interesting when you have not covered everything with the spray. Uh, so now I will take some water. So this is regular water. And now I'm pressing only a little bit to this little uh, thingy here, mainly to the distress oxide ink area first, so that I get this really cool oxide effect. And then when I have that and I have a few yeah, like raindrops here on the oxide ink, I'm also spritzing that to this dye spray. And now mainly here to the, to the areas where not so much of the spray is so that it can run a little bit to the other areas of this page. And now I guess because I, I say I guess because I don't have so much experience with this spray yet. 
um, it's, I guess, a better idea to let this air dry now. As you can see, this already begins to make really cool effects, especially there where the water touches this spray and the ink. And when you let that air dry, it looks so cool in the end. Oh, I promise you, this is such a great effect. And you can also do the following thing. Um, let this dry, but not completely. So you can see here is a lot of water and I know that takes a lot, uh, a lot of time to dry but it is totally worth it. Please believe me. Um, let this dry, but not completely. And when it is a little bit uh, damp, I think that's the word, then you spritz some more water. And you will see that you get this really cool watercolor effects to your paper. Yeah, so uh, what now, Louise? I think we have to take a coffee or something like that because this has to dry now. <laughs> yeah. See you in a second. Okay, so this is nearly dry now. Not totally dry, as I said, but look at this. Isn't this just crazy? This is such a cool effect, and I think the Braille paper is doing a lot for us in this case. <laughs> so I guess that the Braille paper is, yeah, the main thing that makes this look so interesting. I mean, you could reach this effect with the oxide ink and this dye spray, of course, on a normal paper as well. And this watercolor effect you would get on a normal paper as well. I have tried that out. But this effect with the little dots of the uh, Braille writing, of course, that's way more interesting. And now, since this is um, still a little bit wet. I'm just spritzing some more water very carefully, just a few little drops to intensify this watercolor effect, if that is possible. <laughs> so now we have it like this. I will let this soak in and let that air dry again, and then we can go on with the next steps. Okay, so this is totally dry now. I guess in the camera you can't see a very big difference, but with the eye, with the eye you can see it definitely. This is so cool. I am so in love with this effect. And this color combination fits the Grandi Fairies printable so, so well. I mean, this color that we have in this little fog here in the background, it's exactly the same color that we've uh, got with the Freight Burlap ink and this spray. Really, really cool. I was really surprised that this matches each other so, so well. In the camera, it's a little bit more grayish, but in reality, it's some kind of a really moody purple, I would say. And that's the same here. Um, if you don't have this ink, uh, I think, dye spray, of course, you could also try to reach this effect with some oxide ink sprays or some normal... Uh, how are these called, these um, spray stains uh, from Ranger, that would be, I guess, also possible. Uh, but I don't have those sprays until now. I have ordered some because I want to, yeah, get more skills with those Distress products. But um, yeah, perhaps you have some, hmm, which color would work? Perhaps Rusty Hinge or something like that, or uh, I don't know another orange color would probably work in a, in a very similar way but this is absolutely gorgeous okay so now we can take off the paper clips and now we can bring this page together of course you could sew over this now and sew that together but i think that i want to have the attention for this page not on the sewing because that would be something really strong if I would sew with my black thread through here now. Um, so I guess I want to glue this. So for that plan I'm just placing it like this so that I have this little uh, gap here and now this looks like some kind of a drop shadow that was created by the lighter part of this page here. And now of course you can decide how big you want to make that. I think that this is good. That looks really cool. And when we um, glue this together now, I think we can put something in between. Just a tiny piece of something. Not this. <laughs> Louisa, not that. 
choose something else, just a tiny piece of fabric or something like that. Or we could also first glue it and then staple that because I like that when it is here. Yeah, okay, so let's do that. So I'm taking a glue and I'm just pressing this down like I want it to be in the end. You can also check the back side if that is the same there. Yes, it is. Okay, so now press this here. Just flip this open and then... Whoo, why is this so... This is not straight. Okay, so make sure that this whole thing is a rectangle. Otherwise, it would look strange on the back side. Why is this so strange? We could also take a ruler or something and put that against the edge of the ruler to make sure that we have a straight line on the left side of the paper, like this. Okay, so now open it carefully, put your glue here, like this, close that, just press that down. With this braille paper it takes a little bit longer for the glue to dry because of these little uh, hills of the braille letters but it's worth to be patient I guess. <laughs> Let's do that on the back side as well and what I'm just realizing is that we also got a really cool Thing here from the paper clip look at this that looks also really cool <laughs> and it would be not so bad to put a real paper clip back here I guess why not look at this is that that is not the same paper clip that I have used before isn't it was it this one no that's not possible hair <laughs> it has to be this one Ah, okay, so I I see what I made wrong. The longer side of the paper clip has to go here. And when we put that like this, it looks like the paper clip has this drop shadow as well. Look at this. This is just a tiny addition for your journal, but I think this is really cool on this page. So now let's put this little thing here, and I think we will just staple that here. Still a little bit boring, isn't it? <laughs> what about something like this? Perhaps a tiny black accent would be not so bad. Yeah, so let's just take it like this and then just staple both pieces at the same time. I want to make a little cross with my staples. Ooh, not so easy. Ah, good job, Louisa. <laughs> this now looks totally weird. Why is this so strange? Okay, so let's, let's leave it like this. This looks cool. I think that's really, really interesting. And now you have a page that would fit to this signature. Aha. So we can just place it like this and we would have our next page done. And of course you could also take this and decide I want to have it the other way around. Just change the fold if you think it fits better to this page that comes here. Then of course you could just do that and just put it... It's not a good idea to fold that while the glue is not when the glue is not dry, so please don't do that. Do that later when the glue is dry, but you could also put that in here like this so that you can see the colors directly here to the other arrangement that you've already done. Okay, so when we have that, I will just fold that back so that the glue can dry really, really good so that I don't have any problems here later. When we have that, we can go to the next page. <clears throat> so let's just place that here. And another thing that can be really a problem are those pages that you tear out from children's books, for example. So 
for example this page this looks so cute and i really really love these images um, especially when you make um, some kind of unusual fairy journal i like to include those typical fairy pages i mean these little scenarios are really really interesting and i think this contrast between this children's book pages and your own pages and your own um, artworks in the journal can be really interesting and now the problem is that you have perhaps those single pages or it could also be of course that you have taken out a double page from a book so please imagine that this would be one piece then you would have let me show you what i mean on another page then you would have something like this so this is from another book but do you know what i mean this is such a double page that you could tear out from a book like this um, imagine that this would be together and this would be a double page what can we do so when we take the dna5 page and when when this would be if this would be a double page it would be like this when it's together so this is the size and now when i place this here then here would be the fold from the children's books double page and if i would cut that no matter how i would cut it I would lose this whole thing from the page and of course I don't want that and that is the one thing I would lose this uh, piece of the page so let me just place this here so that you can see what is left when I now take this off I have only parts of the image because this what's underneath of the braille paper would be cut and I would also have this white frame here. And that's totally not what I want. I hate white frames. I mean, what to do with this frame? That's totally... Uh, <laughs> do you know what I mean? So if I could place my page to the middle like this, of course, that would be way more easy. And we would lose only these both strips here of the image from the children's book. And that would be not so the problem. So um, I like to take out my pages as single pages. I know that, I mean, from the book, when I have a book and I take it apart, I like to take out the single pages, cut them, and then bring them back together later. For me, that's the most easiest way because tearing out a page like this, it's so easy. But taking out such a double page, it's way more difficult. You have to open the staples that are perhaps in the book you have to cut those threads when this when the book is sewn uh together and to remove that without those little holes is nearly impossible i mean you ha will always have those damages that you have to repair before you can put that into your signature so why not tearing out the single pages and then do with them what you want i think that's way more easy and i have the big luck in this case, that um, DNA5 is exactly as high as the image is here. So I know that I can trim off this white edge and this white edge first. And I will do that with this Tonic Studio Decal Trimmer by Tim Holtz. Um, I'm taking this and um, I'm just cutting off the edges here. This makes, I will show you that in a second a really cool edge as you can see this cuts a little bit irregular and this looks nearly like torn with a tearing ruler of course you could also use a normal cutting machine for this a normal paper trimmer but i really really like this thing i really like to do it with this thing so that we have um this on the top and on the bottom this special edge you could of course also take a ruler place the ruler here and then just tear off the page to get this interest of the of the edge so that you don't have a, a straight edge if you want that and then when we have that we uh, are first trimming this here so for that i'm placing my image uh sorry my place my page here to the image and then i'm just making a little fold here so that I can see where I have to trim. And here I want to have this decorative edge as well. So I'm just 
cutting this off like this then we can put this away and just take the page again put that on top here and so we can see where we have to cut it here and here I'm also making this little mark and then I'm just taking a normal paper trimmer because I want to have a straight edge here now because that's where we want to put the pages the two pages back to each other later sorry I have to turn that around I'm a little bit <laughs> confused when it's the other way around so ah, now I can't see it approximately here so that's not straight like this so now we have a straight edge here uh, don't be confused my paper trimmer is a little bit broken but this is straight now the straight edge and on the other three edges we have this decorative edge from the other trimmer or from the ruler or however you have torn that and now we can decide which page we want to put um, to the other side because we need a second of this of course and I'm just thinking why not using this here let's see when we place this here how we can cut that um, yeah I think we will just do it like this so I will make a little fold here Ooh, let's lay uh, let it lay down here Louise <laughs> here and here so that I can see where I have to cut and now I can leave this edge like it is. It is straight now uh, and it, we, we need it straight because we need a straight edge here and here so that the straight edges meet in the middle here. And now I can trim it here and here so that we have... Oh, ah, oh I've just hurt my finger on my shelf. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Junk journaling is obviously very dangerous. <laughs> I'm so sorry for this noise. <laughs> My goodness. Okay, so let's trim that with the um, interesting uh, edge here and also on the other side so that we have whew, hopefully the same size as the other page is. <clears throat> that should be okay. Yeah, okay. So now we have that and I don't care about the fact that this edge is straight now and that this edge has the decoration and this edge has the decoration. I don't care about that. I think it's the opposite thing. <laughs> I really like that when this is a little bit irregular. So now we have this here and I'm laying this to my table with approximately one and a half millimeter distance here so that the pages are not like this not completely uh, together so we have a little space in there one or one and a half millimeters like this and then we can take um, a piece of paper and we can also take what we have just um, cut off because this is exactly the same height like we need the strip of paper that you need now has to be the same height as DNA 5 or as the page that you have uh, in front of you. And this is, I would say, approximately 3 centimeters. Oh, yes, it, it's exactly 3 centimeters. Um, please decide how wide you want to have this, but please make sure that it is wide enough. I mean, you could go as far into the middle of the page as you want you could also use some kind of a paper doily or something else that you could put on top here now but make sure that you don't lose too much from your image i have chosen this relatively narrow strip to make this technique because i don't want to lose a lot of of this image here we have enough space because here it's white but here if this is too too uh, wide we would lose too much of the image and now I'm taking this and then I'm folding that in half like this. And I'm also uh, folding that to the other side to make sure that it is really flexible. And I'm taking my fingernail or you could also take a bone folder for this and go over this fold so that it is really smooth and that it 
can move like this really easily and then you fold it back in half like this then I'm folding it in half like this but this time I'm only pressing a little bit here to this fold so don't press too much here I'm taking my left hand here where the paper is closed and pressing this together like this and here's the open side of the paper now then I'm taking some scissors and I'm just cutting some kind of a pattern in here so that can be some waves or some zigzag craziness do what you want but I would recommend to come diagonal to this edge here when you come to the end so like this just cut that off you don't need that then we can open this and we would have a really interesting yeah is that a hinge or something like that that we can put to the page here now and we could put it like this so this way we would nearly not see that this is not part of the image <laughs> that looks really interesting here in this case we could also place it this way around to have a more obvious and more strong piece on this page here because this is white but I really like the idea of placing this here and that's also the reason why I have chosen the piece that I have cut off from this page because now the pattern and the image of course fit to each other but uh, you would see that this is not the original part of the image so let's make it a little bit more extremely let's take some oxide ink for distressing you could also use of course normal ink or something else i'm using walnut stain to make this a little bit more brown i'm just going around this here and distress uh, i distress the edges here um you could use this finger sponge i think that is really easy and fast you could also use uh, like this makeup brushes for that but uh, with this sponge you would get this more yeah only to the edge and not too much to the inside of this little paper you could also use for example a stencil and go over this whole thing with a stencil then you would have a really interesting pattern especially here on the white area that would look really interesting as well this could be a little bit stronger here on the bottom so now with this technique of course you make it visible and I want that uh, you can see that it is yeah not part of the page that looks really cool <laughs> okay so now we have that then you can just bring the pages back into the right position a little distance here then just take some glue just put the glue here or to this little hinge that doesn't really matter like this line this up and just glue it down and now I want to give you a little tip that's really hard for me to explain in English but I will try it anyway <laughs> I, I will do my best to um, bring my thoughts to you so now we have this here now we have these both pages together and this is the right size for the journal now so this is my DNA 5 reference page and this is exactly the right size now but <clears throat> we have here in the inside nothing until now and here the both pages are coming to each other when you place this to the signature later <clears throat> it would look really strange I mean you can when you look closer see that the pages are not connected here in my eyes that looks really weird on the one hand and on the other hand if you perhaps by accident have used the wrong glue and this comes off when you have bound this 
into the journal. So I mean, when the journal is finished later and the page comes off here for whatever reason, then it can be really, really hard to, I mean, then it is like this and here are more pages in the signature and this is like this. It can be really hard to open the journal and bring glue below this page. I mean, if this comes off, you want to glue it back here. And that can be really hard. So we have to put something to this area here as well. And now you could say, why don't you use um, a second of this uh, things here? I mean, with the same method, we could we could make a second of this and put it here. I don't want to do that and I will try to explain you the reason. So this paper here is relatively thick as you can hear. That is good for this method with this hinge because when you now open this it still feels like a full page. When you have a thinner paper like this book page for example please imagine we would have done this to this page then we have a really stiff area here along this edge of the book page. And when you then open it, it can happen that it opens like this. And you have this stiff area underneath here and then it opens the rest. And that is, that is absolutely not acceptable for me. That is really crazy. And this would perhaps happen if I would put a second of this strong paper hinge thingies here to the middle and I don't want that and that's the reason why I'm not putting a second piece here so what I'm trying to say is um, if you want to do this then please check how thick your paper is choose a paper that is relatively thick for this method um, and if you don't have such thick pages you could also use a piece of washi tape here and on the inside in, instead of this special thing here. I mean, this is really sturdy compared to washi tape. It's really decorative in uh, compared to washi tape. But yeah, if you have a page that is not flippable in the end, that would be not so good. Uh, yeah. By the way, can we just take a look at this little guy here? Isn't he just crazy cute? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> let's put a piece of washi tape inside here because washi tape is not so thick so that we can put that in here very easily. And it is flexible. Just put a little bit of glue underneath because washi tape isn't sticking so well by itself. I mean, that's the reason why it's a tape because it is not sticking by itself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only kidding but that is sometimes a crazy thing to me that washi tape is not sticking by itself <laughs> even if it's a tape okay so when we have that this area is protected you have uh, covered the gap in between of these both pages and now I will let this dry completely before I uh, fold it together because yeah that is better <laughs> you know and we have left this little gap in between of the both pages that you can fold them easier later that is the reason perhaps I should mention that that is the reason why I have left this little gap there when you put the pages totally together then it's really hard to fold that later this way it's way more easy and it's also easier to sew this page into your signature later when you have this little gap there. So let's let this dry. Let's see what else do we have. We have this page. Oh, that makes me a little bit, you know. <laughs> this is on the one hand very big. And we want to have this little girl here in the right direction. So I can't take it like this, fold it like this, because then she would be in the wrong direction and the flower as well. The flower would be not the problem, but she would be a really big problem, I guess. So what if we... I mean, we have to... Um, 
cover up the back side as well so let's try to do that in uh, in one and the same step so let's just fold it like this uh -huh. I think I have a solution now this would be okay I mean this would be uh, a height that would work for this uh, DNA 5 page the girl is now in the right direction the flower is still upside down, but I really like that in this case because of this little gap here. I mean, do you also think about a Tim Holtz paper doll that is sitting here or a fairy from the ephemera pack that is sitting here? I mean, this, when you look at it, can give you a really cool starting point for a collage or something like that. I really like that. Uh, this idea and now we can just fold this in half and our problem would be solved because now we have it like this and we can just but I think now my flower is only half no it's no it's okay so now we would have it like this <clears throat> in the signature later we have this color that is matching the printable this color would be absolutely no problem when we open it like this, we have the same here, the colors match, here starting point for collage or something like that. Here we have this, this color is perhaps a little bit too strong, we could um, mute that down a little bit, but that would be also no problem. Make a little uh, fairy or something like that that is sitting here on the flower and here the girl would be in the right direction. And here... In the inside, we would have something like a tuck spot or even a pocket because a tuck spot would be not so good for this because imagine you would take something, a journaling card or something like that, and put that in here and this is in the journal like this, then it could fall out really easily to the bottom of the journal. That would be not so great. I mean, this is, yeah, not very, you know, it has no... Thing that can hold it you could place it in here take a paper clip and clip it here but I don't like that I really don't like that um, so I think I will turn this into a pocket and I will do that in on a really easy way um, so I will just go to my sewing machine I will put some glue here first and then place that down and sew along here so that we have a pocket or two pockets here and here so here we go um, to make it look more the same on the bottom and the top of this pocket I have just sewn here as well even if it is not necessary because the paper is closed here but I think this way it looks a little bit better and now I think we will put a little thingy here a little notch or yeah I think we will do a notch like this and on the other side as well but on the other side I will put it to the bottom of the pocket I like that better like this so that you can um, see that this is a pocket and then of course we can also distress the edges of this a little bit um, in my next video I will show you how to grunge up the edges of your junk journal pages uh, so that you don't have to distress everything uh, separately. But I like to have some distressing here and there before I do that next step that you can see in the next video. So I'm just doing that here and there, but you don't have to do that on every single page. I mean, that's of course personal preference. Some people like to do that on every single page. Where is my ink pad now? <laughs> So it is back in the shelf. Can't find it when it is where it should be. <laughs> Some people like to distress every single page and they find meditation in distressing. <laughs> I'm not that kind of junk journaler. That uh, distressing every page more stresses me than it brings uh, relaxing feelings. But of course you can do that as you want it. And here in this case... I want that um, because I want to see 
how this looks when it is a little bit grunged up. That's also the reason why I'm pressing to the paper like this and why I'm crumbling this up a little bit because I will need that later for the whole character of my journal as well. And when I do <clears throat> these things now, I can imagine better how the whole thing will look in the end. And even if I will put nothing to this page, then it's a little bit, yeah, it look, looks not so new and not so, you know, not so like torn out from a magazine. I mean, it is torn out from a magazine, but you know. So now we can put that here. Then we have a pocket here that we can fill up with something. And on the other side of the signature, we have this and we have a pocket here. Okay, so uh, we have that. And now I will go on with my other pages that I have here that are obviously too big. I will do some similar techniques like I have shown you with those three pages. So I will um, decide which technique I want to do. Are that four different ideas? I guess this is one, this is two, this with the hinge is three and this one here is the fourth idea. So I will um, choose an idea for every page that I have left over that is too big. I will shrink them down to the right size and then I will come back in a second and show you what I have done and go through all of those pages with you so that you can see that and perhaps find an idea for yourself as well. Okay, so here I'm back with my pages that will fit into my journal now. So let me show you what I have done with these. This was a double page originally. I have just put a little piece of washi tape here to strengthen this uh, fold here so that it can't fall apart. And for this side here, I have used the idea of this page, but in a little bit different way. So I have just layered two um, layers here, as you can see. Uh, that was not a good sentence, but <laughs> you can see it here. So this is just a piece of packaging paper that I have put on top and then I did a similar thing like here. Uh, I did that because this page underneath is really, really thin. And in my next step, I want to grunge up my pages a little bit and to make this whole thing a little bit more sturdy. I have done this double layer thingy to them. I've also went a little bit crazy with my stitching. As you can see here, I think that looks really interesting. And this, of course, is not finished. Yeah, so I will do several steps to these pages, not only to this one, but to the others as well, to grunge them up, to stamp on them, to put some stenciling perhaps to them. And this is not the final result, of course, but I think that this can give you a lot of inspiration for the next steps. So for this one here, with these black and white images, I've decided that I just want to tear the page in the middle so that I have, yeah, the whole um, picture of this woman here and this whole music uh, element here. And on the other side now I have the uh, other part of the page. I think that is very easy, but for this one, I really like this easiness of the of this um, page because I think um, that this is outstanding enough. I mean, if I put uh, much to this page, this image would be perhaps not so outstanding anymore. On the back, I have uh, done it like this. So I have made a little tuck spot here and a little tuck spot here so that when you have the page in a signature, and another page is here, then you have this little double uh, tuck spot thingy here, or I actually think it's a pocket because it has only the opening here, but th that doesn't matter. You can put something in here and here. Um, these um, both pockets that are really close to each other would be great to put some smaller ephemera in here. I thought about some tickets that could be in here and in the other one as well, and I think that looks really cool in combination with the other pages. So the next one that I did was this one here. For that I've taken the dictionary pages that I found 
and I've made a little, yeah, some kind of a window here around the word fee, that means fairy. And uh, I've made this with some packaging paper as well. Just to, uh, I have just torn this little piece and then torn this little window and sewn around with my sewing machine. And the original page of this dictionary was like this. So what you can see here is already the part of the next page that go ooh, sorry that goes around like this so when this is in the signature it will be like this this will show only the half of the one page of the signature uh, of the page sorry then we have this and on the other side it's like this and i have made this page that originally was like this a little bit wider just by gluing the other page on top here with the help of this packaging paper you don't see where it's glued together and I really really like the different uh, writing here so you can see that it is from different uh, dictionaries when you look closer I really like this look <clears throat> a similar thing I did with this dictionary page. I've decided to just fold that in half so that it can be in the signature later like this. And I've made also here this little window. You have to turn it around to read that. And this says also fee that translates to fairy. For the page with this dancing woman, I've decided to go with the technique that we've made here. But I did it a little bit different here to make it a little bit more interesting. So I've first torn the page here and then I've torn um, a little bit of the top part and that I've put back here. So what you can see here, I have just um, sewn on top and then I have uh, folded the edges. And the interesting thing is that, can you see this little pattern there that comes... I mean, this is just folded. No, I can't fold it back. This is just this part of, of the paper that is uh, next to the sewing. And I've just folded it like this. And now here you can see this pattern. And of course, that's what was on the back side. And I think that looks really interesting. And look how the spray that I have put on top went through the areas where the sewing is. I think that looks really, really grungy and really aged and very interesting and here on the other side now you can see this pattern and i think that looks really interesting and by happy accident this colors match the rest and i think this brings a really cool attention to this picture here and of course we could also decorate this part or this part or we could add some uh whatever staple thingies this <laughs> or whatever um, and yeah I think that is also a great starting point for the rest and in the signature it would be like this so you would see this part of the page on the one uh, side and this on the other side and I think that looks really really cool um, for the page with this butterfly here I have decided to make something that is not so grunged up until now because I don't know what I will do with this because this was the most difficult thing but I could manage it so now this page is like this so that it goes to the signature yeah like this when you open it we have this back side here we have to change this I have to paint something over it or glue another paper to it because this blue wouldn't fit the rest or I would have to make some kind of a color bridge to the rest of the pages I guess that would be really hard but let's see and here on the other side I have now this little banner so this is just like this can you see that here's the fold and the page here on the other side is as high as here, of course. So I put this little banner that I have cut from this page. And this is a pocket now. So I have just glued this to this little thing that came around the corner from this page. And now we have a pocket here. 
I have to sew that here, but I think I will first decide uh, how I want to grunge the edges up and then I will sew or perhaps, yeah, I don't know until now, but I, I don't want it to sew everything now because I don't want, uh, I don't know if I want to put something underneath here. I'm also planning to um, sew along here through the banner so that <clears throat> when the page is later on in the journal, oh my goodness, it starts to rain here really extremely I hope that it is not too loud for you I'm sorry so when when this goes into the signature and another page is for example here and you would open this this banner is relatively close to this fold here I mean if you put something underneath to tuck something underneath a journaling card or something like that that could be a little bit bulky and then it could be a problem to close this until now it seems not to be a problem but perhaps it becomes a problem <laughs> and to avoid this problem I have not sewn this because I first want to decide how this will be in the end and then I decide where I want to sew okay so uh, I guess we have everything here now what i have done and uh what i have left is this funny page here from the fairy children's book um and i decided that i want to turn this into a giant journaling card i have put this um page here on top so that i can see that everything would be on the journaling card if it's a little bit smaller than dna5 so that means um, I could turn that into a page, of course, but I, I think when I turn this into a journaling card, it will be way more outstanding um, than a normal page. So you can also take that out and write something to the backside and so on. So I will do that, uh, I think, without the camera, but I'm not totally sure until now because this is my nearly live process what I'm showing you and I have to think about this I have to edit the video now and then I have to think what I will uh, do next and perhaps uh, it will change a little bit please excuse that but it's really hard to film such a real process of making a journal but you know I'm trying my best to show that to you and to answer all of your questions of course at the same time that's really hard but I try to manage that and now yeah what will I do next uh, yeah okay so uh, I will put the signatures together now uh, so that means I will put all the pages into the order that I want them to be in the journal later and then in my next video I will show you a really really easy and effective way to grunge up the edges of your pages I mean as I said, you could sit down now and distress every single page with a sponge like this or a brush or something else, uh, these, you know, distressing tools. But there's a really, really efficient way um, to grunge up your edges all at the same or let's say nearly all at the same time in the same way, but with really interesting and really grungy effects. That will make our junk journal pages, as I said, really grungy on the one hand, really vintage. And this process is just uncontrollable so that you can also have the chance to get into this loose kind of working. Do you know what I mean? So sometimes we perhaps are overthinking the things too much. And that method is really, really good for letting the things flow and let everything become like it wants to become and you can also learn to accept what you then have on your desk and that's what i want to try to bring to you in my next video so have fun to imitate these ideas here feel free to steal them <laughs> and try that for your own junk journal pages i hope you like this see you the next time bye bye